Okay, it's time to begin constructing the box that surrounds the mechanism. Um, the walls of the box are three pieces of cardboard and one piece of card thick, at least at this point. So we need to start making those pieces. Um, we're going to do the end, the bottom and the top first and then the sides. So take your trusty template and we are going to punch some holes, but first the height of these pieces is four centimeters high. So we set up our template for four centimeters. I put the bottom and top on first and then put the sides on. Okay, I've got my template set up for the bottom top pieces. Now, we do pieces of card. And again, we are marking which way it is up because we want to have all these pieces um, aligned in the same direction. cardboard. That's just the rough cut. I have to uh, actually cut the pieces out as well. Okay. So we're going to need six of these. Three for each piece.
Okay, those are the pieces for the ends. Now we set up the template for the pieces from the sides. And these are also four centimeters tall. Okay, there we go. Now the next step is to glue them together. Okay, so gluing these together. We set aside the face because this will glue on after these have been glued together and are a little dry. Now, all cardboard, let me show you here one as. We will do this one first. All cardboard has two faces. One face is the side that's printed on and is slightly smoother. The other side shows the corrugation of the cardboard much more. So what we want to do is have the smooth side out on each of these um, composites, each of the uh, groupings of three layers. So we have like that. Okay, and we want to have all of our little arrows pointing in the same direction. So, take this and 
we put some glue and it doesn't take much to glue these together because we're just trying to get an adherence nothing more so that's all the glue I'll use in this instance okay now we want to get these as even as possible and so I bring out my little right angle here and I press down and towards the right angle and that evens all the layers up and even turn it over like this we want to have the even side at the up end of the arrow so the arrow is pointing this way and that side is perfectly even we'll check to make sure and okay now we we'll do it one more time okay we put that under a little bit of pressure Now we leave those to dry for a few minutes, just a few minutes. Okay, these have sat for long enough and they're dry. It's about three, four minutes. Now we're going to glue the card onto the pieces. Now we have to glue it, arrows pointing in the same direction, etc. And this takes more glue than just gluing the cardboard together. again with the square Okay, and then we put them under pressure. Now these definitely need pressure until they dry thoroughly because I've added a bunch more liquid with all the glue. So, in order to prevent them from warping like crazy, which we can't have, um, it makes it impossible to attach them to the game maker, to the mechanism, if there's too much warpage. So there we go. Those have to dry for several hours until they are fully dry. Okay. Hello. So today these are thoroughly dried. All of them are thoroughly dried. Now, these are going to be glued onto the uh, mechanism 
with the um, card covered side inward. Now I have to paint these black before I glue them on. So that is what I will be doing now. I give them two or three, possibly, coats of black paint first. So, make up our black here. Okay, now we let those dry and then we put on another coat of paint. Now I try to get the paint fairly thin on these each time uh, to reduce the amount of warpage. You cannot warp too much or it becomes impossible to attach them to the mechanism. Okay. Okay, second coat. are dry and uh, two coats has proved to be enough. So we are going to glue them on this one onto this end like that. But before I do that, I need to make sure that the bottom is even. Doesn't stick out anywhere and is all copacetic. And to do that, I just compress the uh, places that it protrudes with my thumbnail. Okay, so see how this fits. Now the arrow has to go up on this point because this is going to be our lip of the box itself. So we want that to be nice and flat and even. So that fits there, looks good. Okay, okay, so, glue, I just slop a whole bunch of glue on here, make sure that's all even, okay, to glue this well. Put lots of glue on here and get it right to the edge so that the card is totally covered in glue and will make a nice bond. Wipe off the excess from the face and the back. Okay. And arrow up. Okay. Now. Now. 
and you have to get that on square at the corners to make sure it doesn't protrude. There we go. And with my right angle, I want to make sure that it sits at a right angle. Now the, the mechanism is concave a little bit, so you want to press down in the center and make sure that it sort of levels itself out and press down on this to make sure that it is where it needs to be. It's straight. Okay. That is good enough. sure that that is good and square or as close as you can get um, because this is the foot of the gate maker when it stands up it's going to stand like that and we want it to be as vertical as possible mindful that there is a concavity here um, but we want it as close as possible at this stage. We uh, can make some corrections in that, some improvements upon it as we build up the rest of the frame. Okay. There we go. That has to sit and dry. And, uh, yeah. Sit and dry for mm, a while. Maybe as much as an hour, okay? Okay, that has dried enough. Time to glue the other side. Yeah. Okay, that's been drying for about a half hour, and it looks totally fine. Yeah, so we're still good. Okay, now we're going to put on one of the sides over here. Okay, now, to glue this one, we are actually going to turn it like this, so that the, um, the lip of the box becomes the flattest part. Yes, that's going to work out good. Okay, so we slop a lot of glue on here as well.
Okay. While the box is drying, I have to cut three pieces of cardstock and three pieces of cardboard, or four pieces of cardboard. Um, I want to cut the lid, which is three layers thick, and then I need to cut another piece to go, oh, let me show you. I cut the lid, three layers thick, and then a piece to cover at the bottom, um, just one layer thick of cardboard. And then a piece of card to go over what I put on the bottom, and it'd be the same size as the bottom, and a piece for the top of the lid and for the bottom of the lid and card that will be the same size as the lid itself. Okay, so we use our handy dandy template, and the outermost corners of the template are the spots we use to poke our holes. So, okay. So, oh, three pieces of the card. four of the cardboard. One simple one for the back. Okay, one thing I should explain about cardboard. It's corrugated. And you can see the ridges of the corrugation run this way. That's its grain, shall we say. Um, I like to always cut on the uh, printed side, which is the smoother side. But for the lid specifically, we want to go two of them that are cross grain like this, and one of them that is this way with the grain. Um, that helps by alternating how the grain um, is in the lid, which is three parts. I'll put the cross grain on each of the outer edges of it and sides of it and the one that's cut with the grain uh, on the long side um, will stick in the middle and that will help in the the warpage of the lid the lid is the thing you have to be the most careful on the warpage with um, you have to turn it over uh, leave it drying under pressure for several days, if at all possible. Um, because if the, if the lid warps too much, it just won't sit on the game maker. That's all there is to it. So, how many can we get out of
Okay, now we will glue the lid together. And we have one here on this side facing out in the flatter surface on the outside and the flatter surface on the outside here. And then the one that we cut with the grain instead of across the grain. So I'm going to set that aside and I'm going to take the two um, with the, the surface and put the glue on the inside of them so there's no glue on this piece in the center. This helps it um, avoid too much uh, warpage. So we don't need much glue. We'll get it around the edge and a little bit in the center. We don't need much glue. Yeah. You want to use just enough and no more because you don't want to put very much moisture here in the lid because it will warp. And we want to avoid that at all costs. Okay, that's enough glue. And we put this on here. Turn this over on here. Okay. And we want to make sure that all the sides and all the corners are perfectly even. this if the corners are square then the whole piece is square but the main thing is that the two outer sides of the lid are perfectly square um, you can fudge the um, inner piece the edge of the inner piece if we need this under heavy pressure and we put it under our big uh, pressure board here Okay, next we are going to put the back on the gate maker. And yes, that fits perfectly. Okay. So. danger of this warping at all because we've uh, secured it basically with the sides and they're going at a different angle so it's all holding stable um, at this point so like with the lid we don't need a whole lot of glue to tack this down but we'll have more than we had on the lid. And right along here, 
the edge, it's important that we get enough glue. We'll have to go over this with our brush or glue brush to make sure that there is glue connecting the edges. Okay, now we just let this dry for a time. Okay, the mechanism has been sitting for a day under pressure and the back has made a nice bonding. So I am now going to put the piece of card that I cut earlier on the back. And it's a very simple, straightforward process. Got to use a pretty fair amount of glue. Uh, make sure that it really makes good adhesion. Now that goes back under pressure for a 
another day. Okay, I have taken the lid out of its uh, press and it's doing really good for one day. Now I'm going to glue a piece of card to this side, press it again for a little while and then glue the other piece on this side. Now I don't want to have it out of the press for very long because it will start to warp. <clears throat> Especially now with the uh, addition of this much glue. Okay, then that goes back under pressure as soon as possible there. Okay. It'll leave that to dry for a while, maybe as much as an hour, maybe less. Okay, it's been under pressure for about 45 minutes. Now I'm going to make this just as quick as I can, because I don't want to start. To, uh, uh, don't want it to start warping too much. Okay, back under pressure. Okay, our next task is to create pieces of card that will cover these areas. So we need to measure what I'm aiming for here.
<clears throat> okay, now we have to put pieces of card on the lip of the box. So we measure it up. Okay, that's all done. It's paper, I mean, uh, card on the outside all around. The only thing left to do with this is paint and a little bit of felt work. So I'll set that aside. Okay, I've taken the lid out of pressure for a little while. While I want to do card on the four edges of the lid. But I don't want to leave it out to air too long at a time. So I will cut my uh, pieces of measure and cut. And yeah.
Okay, everything is edged and sealed off and ready for paint. But this will stay under pressure for another while. Yep. <clears throat> Okay, I have to cut out 24 half inch squares from chipboard. These are for the feet that go on the back of the mechanism and the feet that go on the underside of the lid. Uh, the mechanism to keep it uh, off uh, surfaces and on the lid to hold the lid in place on the mechanism. So, I will go ahead and do this to draw it out and then cut it out and glue it together, etc. So.
Okay, now we will put the feet on the mechanism. Now, these feet go right in the corners. Um, yeah, right in the corners here. Okay, now we have the lid, and the lid has a very slight bow to it, bowing this way, and you can check that on the flat surface, this doesn't move at all. It's actually pretty even, but slightly more of a bow that way. Okay, so we'll put the uh, feet for the lid on this side. Now these need to go in um, six, uh, five sixteenths of an inch, uh, or. <clears throat> nine sixteenths of an inch just a little over a half an inch in from the corner so we will mark that up and then glue on the little feet Okay, now that the feet are on and have dried, I will start painting. The first thing I paint is the back. And then I go to the sides and then the lip and interior. Okay, that's coat number one. I will go for three coats in the end uh, on the box. Okay, snip that aside. Okay, so we check to see if the feet fit. Yes, and it fits fine. 
so we put our first coat of paint on the lid. Now we want to make the coats very thin, if at all possible, uh, so that there's less moisture goes in at one time and we get less uh, warpage. So start here. coat is dry. So we have one coat on both sides of the lid. Now before I go forward, I check the edges for any rough bits. The, the fibers in the cuts uh, in the card expand with the moisture of the glue. So they form little prickly bits, little rough bits. You can actually cut yourself on those. So I take the back of my thumbnail and I rub those down. 
what you're doing is you're bending them back down into the dry glue which is still soft glue takes a while of drying before it becomes truly hard and you get the corners the corners are always very sharp okay and we'll do the same on the bottom and it's good to get the feet the little feet here also get very sharp on the corners so you don't want to be cutting your yourself on your brand new game maker okay All those corners are rounded now and then I again get the uh, edge with my thumb and the corners okay so coat number two Okay, this is dry enough. Now check the sides for any sharpness and the feet, and they're fine. Now we're gonna paint the sides, and I always start with the side of mercy. Um, as long as you take note of which side you're starting on, um, you won't get confused, because <laughs> it can be confusing doing three coats on all the sides because uh, you have to split it up a little bit. Um, I start on the long side first, far corner, so that by the, time, by the time I'm down to here and doing this point of it, this edge is dry enough for me to then turn it this way and do this, the top, or bottom in this case, um, side. Then I let it dry. Then I can turn it to on the part that has been painted dry and do this side and in the same. This will be dry enough to upend it to do this side. Then I leave it dry. So that's one complete coat that way. It takes a while. Okay.
Today we're painting the lip and the edge of the lid. decorations for the top of the lid. Now I cut them out and I save this uh, background piece um, to position them on the top of the game maker's lid. So I will cut out oh.
Okay, now that I've cut all the decorations out, I'm going to cut out this uh, piece and it will fit directly on top of the lid, which will give me a guide for gluing these onto the lid. So. Okay, so here's the lid. Okay, now this fits exactly on the lid, or pretty close at any rate, so that I can then use this as my guide for laying on these decorations. Now, ordinarily I do everything in the Sephirotic order, but with this, I cannot, because I have to anchor it here and then there so that I can get these all straight, etc. So, oh, some glue. Using my pokey tool as a guide and an aid, I poke this down into the hole that it came out of. So, I let that dry a little bit. Okay, and then this is how I guide it into the correct place. I get this evened up, squared up. Come on. Come on. Okay, and that's on in the center. I then press that down and holding it, I lift this up, and there it's in the perfect position, and I just press it down some, okay, next will be Malkuth,
Okay, now the varnishing. I use this simple acrylic varnish, and I want to varnish the underside with feet of both the lid and the mechanism, and then we'll let that dry overnight. Then we'll varnish the rest. Okay.
It's been a couple of days since I varnished the gate maker and the lid. Um, I like to let it sit for at least four days, preferably five or six days, before really handling it much. Um, by then, the uh, varnish is a little less tacky, or a lot less tacky. You can actually touch it and uh, not stick to it. Um, so, but now, uh, at this point, we can put on the little felt pieces for the feet of the box and for the underside of the lid. This keeps the surfaces from sticking to each other, which they will on a varnished surface. If they make direct contact, they will tend to stick to each other. And it also um, buffers the, the feet uh, for like putting it on a, a nice table, something like that. That way it doesn't scratch anything that it sits on. So I have my little uh, pieces of felt cut out already and I will put them on the feet and the lid. So yeah, it's a real simple process of gluing. Now, these pieces on the lid, um, on the underside, the feet, and then there is a space at the corner. You want to put them in the corner itself, okay? Okay, there we go. Okay, that ends the construction of the gate maker. The only thing left is the tuning of the crystals. And I will attempt in the next video to live tape um, my tuning process. Um, we'll see how that goes. I don't know if it'll be usable, but we'll see how it goes.